In 1988, after 28 years of service with the Ontario Provincial Police, Constable Gordon Dom retired. In May of 1989, he formed the Guelph-based Citizens Coalition favoring more effective criminal sentences. In the Ontario election of 1990, Ontario's Liberal Premier, David Peterson, lost his seat to new Democratic Party candidate Marion Boyd. An English major with a history of union activism, Boyd was also a noted radical feminist, one of a group of noted militant feminists in London, Ontario. Boyd was also a former executive director of the London Battered Women's Advocacy Clinic and had served two terms as president of the London Status of Women Action Group. In mid-June of 1991, 14-year-old Leslie Mahaffey went missing. On June 29, 1991, her disconnected remains were found encased in cement in Lake Gibson in St. Catharines, Ontario. On April 16, 1992, 15-year-old Kristen French was abducted. Her body was found on April 30, 1992. On November 2, 1992, now Minister responsible for women's issues, Marion Boyd announced in the Ontario Legislature that, quote, November is Wife Assault Prevention Month in Ontario, unquote. She asserted that, quote, assaulted women live in a state of siege. Like prisoners of war, women do what they must to survive things that may not make sense to those of us who stand on the other side of the barbed wire fence." Unquote. Three months later, on February 3, 1993, Marion Boyd was appointed Attorney General, Ontario's first female Attorney General, and also its first non-lawyer. On February 17, 1993, Paul Bernardo of St. Catharines, Ontario, was charged with the rapes of numerous women that had occurred between 1987 and 1990. On February 22nd, the Toronto Star ran a story in which Carla Hamolka, Bernardo's wife, was alleged also to be one of Bernardo's victims. It stated that Bernardo was expected to be charged in the slayings of Mahaffey and French. It reported that Hamolka and her lawyer had been discussing with the Attorney General's ministry whether or not she could help in the probes of the homicides of Mahaffey and French. On February 23rd, Attorney General Marion Boyd announced that Paul Bernardo would be charged with the French and Mahaffey slayings in a few days. It was reported that Homolka was trying to reach an agreement with officials at the Attorney General's ministry, quote, giving her some form of immunity for her testimony in the two slayings, unquote. On February 24th, Attorney General Marion Boyd was roundly criticized by the Criminal Lawyers Association for saying Bernardo would be charged. Perhaps realizing she had said too much, Boyd flip-flopped, saying she did not know when or if Bernardo would be charged with the slayings of French and Mahaffey. On February 26th, Boyd turned on the media. In a media release, she announced that she was concerned, quote, about the nature and extent of the media coverage, unquote, and that she had asked officials to investigate whether, quote, any action should be taken, unquote. No specific media reports were mentioned, but clearly something had been published that Boyd did not want the public to read. On May 18th, 1993, Carla Homolka was charged with manslaughter in the deaths of French and Mahaffey. Bernardo was charged that day with first-degree murder in those slayings. On June 28, 1993, the Crown brought a motion seeking a publication ban, allegedly so that Bernardo would get a fair trial, although Bernardo opposed the ban. Bernardo's lawyers argued that, quote, the suggestion has been made in the media that she, Homolka, is a victim of my client, unquote, and that if a publication ban were imposed, quote, that would only foster the impression, unquote, that Homolka was a victim of Bernardo. Bernardo's lawyers argued that, quote, given the possibility that there is a negotiated settlement in Homolka's case, a ban would lead to a misleading impression of the case. The impression is that following his arrest, he, Bernardo, is depicted as the principal, and his wife is seen as assisting the Crown. If there is a ban, what you will continue to have is the same perception in the newspapers, that he is the principal, unquote. On July 5, 1993, Judge Kovacs imposed the publication ban. The next day, in a one-day hearing, Carla Homolka was convicted of two counts of manslaughter and sentenced to 12 years in prison. The public was not told whether she had pleaded guilty or innocent, and none of the facts presented at the trial were allowed to be published. In a profile of Marion Boyd, published in the Toronto Star just weeks after Homolka's conviction, Boyd spoke of Homolka's case as follows, quote, for those of us who've worked in the battered women's movement, who know about violence against women, these are horrific confirmations of the kind of target that women are for violence, unquote. It was an odd comment to make in the context of a case in which a woman was convicted of manslaughter of two girls. 
it was a comment that implied that Homolka herself was a victim and a pawn in the slayings of Mahaffey and French. It was a prejudicial comment, given that Bernardo's trial would be almost two years away. Over the following months, American and British media issued reports about the slayings of French and Mahaffey. The reports were said to be drawn from statements made by those who were present at the Homolka trial. The reports did not portray Homolka as a helpless victim of battered wife syndrome, but as a willing and eager participant in the sexual torture and death of French and Mahaffey. The reports disclosed that at her trial, Homolka gave evidence that she had drugged her sister so that she and Bernardo could have sex with her sister's unconscious body. The evidence explained that her sister died that night as a result. Homolka was not charged for the offenses against her sister. Outraged that Homolka would serve only 12 years for her participation in what was arguably the most evil and twisted slaying in Canadian history, in late November 1993, retired OPP officer Gordon Dom mailed out to Canadians some news reports he had obtained from U.S. and British news media. He was charged with contempt of court. On May 20, 1994, Gordon Dom was convicted. He announced that he would appeal the decision. On November 24, 1994, the Toronto Star reported that items had been missed by police during their 1993 search of the Bernardo Homolka home, and that just days after the police search warrant terminated, the evidence was discovered in the house by movers working for the Bernardo defense team. The report said that the evidence was turned over to the Crown in August of 1994, more than a year after Carla Homolka's conviction. On April 28, 1995, the governing NDP dropped the writ for a general provincial election in Ontario. Almost three weeks later, on May 18, 1995, the leaders of the NDP, Liberal and PC parties participated in a televised leaders' debate. Paul Bernardo's trial had started earlier that day. In opening comments, the Crown revealed that Carla's sister, Tammy Lynn Homolka, had been drugged and sexually assaulted not only by Bernardo, but also by Carla, her sister. Ontario went to the polls on June 8, 1995, and tossed the NDP out of office. Eleven days later, on June 19, Carla Homolka took the stand as the Crown's most important witness against Bernardo. As expected, Carla portrayed herself as the helpless victim who was simply acting out of fear of Bernardo when she abducted girls, drugged them, sexually assaulted them, and assisted in the disposal of their dead bodies. An expert on battered wife syndrome would later be brought in, in an effort to make sense of Carla's apparently eager participation in videotapes of the assaults of her sister, Mahaffey, and French. Then on June 29th, the public was told all about the May 18, 1995 deal that Carla had struck with Marion Boyd's Office of the Attorney General. In exchange for her testimony against Bernardo, she would serve 12 years in jail with eligibility for parole just five years into her sentence. Most importantly, she would not be charged with the sexual assault, drugging, or death of her own sister, Tammy Lynn Homolka. For almost two years, the publication ban made it easier for Marion Boyd and others to continue the radical feminist narrative in which Carla Homolka was a helpless victim. It also ensured that nobody learned the shocking, outrageous, and unjust details of Boyd's so-called deal with the devil until after the election of 1995.